Hello all, and today we're going to do an unbagging of C3i Magazine. This is put out by RBM Studio, which is, you know, Roger McGowan Studio. And as you might know, Roger McGowan's a very uh, well-known and long-time, you know, art uh, contributor to uh, two war games. done several war game magazines and has done um, the cover art and layout for several war games. Uh, most currently, you know, with uh, GMT war games. And this magazine is, although it's not dedicated to GMT games, um, it tends to always offer a lot of uh, extras or features or or bonus counters or errata counters or the like for uh, GMT games. So let's get inside the bag here and see what we get. And this is different, uh, uh, kind of a different magazine than what you might see with the, the decision games magazines like St uh, Strategy and Tactics or the like, which, you know, have a game in them, but they also have like historical articles. This magazine tends to have articles that are really based on war games. Uh, and so more of a trade type magazine in that respect. So you get uh, a magazine, a full color magazine. Uh, here, this is talking about the Battle for Curse, which actually comes, uh, two games come in this issue. One of them is the Battle of Curse, which is a <clears throat> hex encounter uh, war game covering the Battle of Curse from World War II. And it has somewhat of a, a novel uh, system where you're kind of choosing your, uh, your stance, uh, and that makes a difference on what you can uh, do for the turn, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that. I might, I'll show you what you get in the magazine, uh, along with the magazine, but I'll probably do a separate thing <clears throat> covering that game specifically. So you get the, you know, here's your table of contents for it. So you got up to, you know, let's see, page 67. Let's see how many pages this is. This is, uh, 67 pages. Okay. So, you know, full color magazine, 67 pages. And, as I said, most of this is covering, you know, specific to the war game industry. Here's a, an article by uh, James Dunnigan, you know, very um, well-known and historic figure in uh, war games. I've added a lot of games to the hobby. And then you have, um, here's a designer's look back at 20 years of the Great Battles of History series. Here's an article about that. Again, that's a GMT game. Fields of Fire which is a, you know, a solo game uh, covering um, World War II and uh, Korea. I don't know if it covers Vietnam as well, but I know it at least covers World War II and Korea. Um, <clears throat> yeah, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. So here's an article about that, about offensive tactics. Again, another GMT-specific games. Here's the Hunters. There's an expansion pack in here that adds a couple of new boards for the Hunters. Here's a scenario for SPQR uh, and talking about that and some of the details related to that. Here's an article about For the People. Actually, it's an article about um, designing unbalanced games or how to create strategic surprise uh, by, by Mark Herman, who's done, of course, a lot of games for a lot of companies, but most recently uh, GMT on some of these. So as you see, here's a lot of different... Um, Articles in here, and they're specific to war games. They're not necessarily, you know, like you might see in other games, uh, other uh, war game type magazines, uh, you know, ge general historical articles. You'll see uh, games that are kind of related to uh, the war games themselves. Here's an article about, about Undaunted Normandy uh, by David Thompson, who's the designer of Undaunted Normandy. And this one's going a little bit into the history because he's walking the footsteps of it which is kind of interesting to show the kind of the background or basis of, of the game. Here's an article about France 1944 by Judd Vance, who, is, uh, who was the game developer on that. This is a Mark Herman design. Uh, Judd is just a few hours down the road from me in Wichita, Kansas. So it's always interesting to see a local boy done good. So you've got, and then here, here we're going into the operational combat series. So this is, you know, this is one of the first articles I see in here that's not GMT uh, related or, or heavily uh, relied upon. This is uh, MMP, a multi-man publishing type games, the o OCS system, which 
I think originally came from the Gamers, but it's published through um, Multiman Publishing. So here's an article on that. Here's an article for Harold Buchanan on why do we play games. You know, Harold Buchanan is the designer of Liberty or Death, the uh, Revol American Revolution coins game. So this is pretty interesting, some analysis there. Uh, C3, I interviewed with Chad Jensen, who was the designer of uh, uh, Combat Commander series, uh, as well as other games, uh, the late Chad Jensen. So I'm really interested in looking into that article. I tend to like his uh, designs. Here's an opening Waterloo strategy. This was a free game, or, uh, well, free game. It came with uh, C3i Magazine, a previous issue, and here's a, uh, it's designed by Mark Herman, and here's a strategy article about that game, Waterloo 8 at 1815. There's been a lot of good comments on that game, uh, on how, uh, on the simplicity of the system, but yet the decisions it offers. So here's a whole strategy article on that. Uh, Drop Zone Southern France, game design here. So this is, uh, so this is on the P500 list, a G GMT game. So there, there you have it. That's that's kind of the whole magazine there. So a lot of interesting articles, game related articles. So if you're in, if, in again, mostly GMT based games, but still uh, good articles nonetheless. Uh, here's the uh, rule book for Battle of Kursk, the the game that comes along with this issue. Actually, two games come along with this issue. So it's 16 pages, full color, uh, lays out. You know, the, your rules in this game, it looks very similar. You know, Hex Encounter, Zone of Control, uh, has a combat results table, so all that good stuff. But what's, what is different in this game, and I might show it here on the map, you, have, you get a full color map here. But the, the difference in this game is uh, the best I can tell. I haven't, I haven't played it yet. But you have this um, position track. On You're going to pick, you know, whether you're, uh, you're going to pause you're going to uh, reposition, deploy, or engage, and based on where you land on that, that tells you uh, what 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 your whatever your posture is tells you what you can do. So you'll go through this whole sequence of of play here. But if you chose to do um, to pause, you're only going to do the what's in the piece. You'll just do replacement, and you're done. If you chose to do uh, reposition, which is the R, the blue R. Well, you're going to do replacement and movement, okay? And same, and you can move up and down this track, but it's going to cost you some action points, I guess, to move up and down this track. Uh, so you can't just like pick whatever you want each turn. And so, but that's going to limit what you can do on the sequence of play. So that's going to be kind of an interesting, um, that's going to be, that's a little bit different from some of the other games I've seen uh, and adds a new, little new twist to uh, Hex Encounter and, and the Battle of, of Kursk. And then, uh, these are optional odds markers, uh, so I guess you can make these yourself. Uh, it's, it's an optional, not sure how that fits in. Uh, here's the second game in here is Firebase Vietnam, solitaire game. I think this is just like a dice game. This is all you get, it's just a, a four page fold out, actually two pages, because the back is a advertisement for Waterloo 1815 and then Gettysburg. These systems are both for Mark Herman and share a lot of similar similarities uh, Waterloo is the more more recent one, and then this is the dice game. So here's all your rules. I think you're gonna have to supply some dice, and so basically, I guess this is someone's called it, uh, you know, Vietnam War Yahtzee. Uh, we'll see. I think um, uh, uh, Mo's Game Table has done a playthrough of this. So you might check that out, and see what how, how it plays and what he thinks of it. But uh, simple game uh, again. One page of rules, you supply the dice, and there you go, uh, playing a uh, Vietnam game. These are the uh, uh, handouts for the uh, scenario, the SPQR scenario that's talked about in there. And then you also have it for a simple uh, Great Battles of History. And again, that's one of the nice things about uh, C3i Magazine. You get a lot of goodies. Uh, you know, if you have some of these games, uh, then great. You've got a lot of extra neat stuff. For a completist, it's a great marketing tool because you buy the magazine and go, golly, I got all this stuff, but I don't have that game. I guess I got to go out and get that game. I've already got this because I probably got it because of another C3i insert earlier. Uh, here's the stuff for Hunters. You get two new um, 
one painted one side, but you get two new submarines, uh, type uh, uh, 11 and type UA. So some new submarines in here, that's always cool. And these are heavy stocks. You can just put those right in uh, right in your game and, and be playing along. Uh, but if you played the 100 Hunters as a solo game, which is kind of a charty uh, war game or charty solo that I like to call, that uh, you're rolling dice and having a lot of charts and making decisions based on what happens on those charts. And you're, you're going on, in this case, you're going on missions as a German submarine trying to sink uh, as much tonnage or capital ships as as possible and this is the chart to keep track of like where your torpedoes are at or uh, defense equipment or um, how, how your equipment is, is holding up what's your crew status and and, the, and any awards or, or or events that you get on that um, this is a neat little addition here this is a, a done by David uh, Doctor uh, and Roger McGowan. This is The Art of Wargaming Over 60 Years, a big fold-out magazine that shows how uh, historical conflict board games kind of have evolved over the last 60 years. Um, and uh, uh, David Doctor, he's a, a designer of uh, Triumph of Chaos and uh, has done several of these kind of uh, graphic displays over time. Uh, for uh, C3i Magazine or, or RBM Studio. Uh, and he also has his um, own uh, podcast that I recommend, uh, uh, Guns and Butter or War Guns and Butter, but it's a real, real good podcast uh, if you want to listen to that, uh, dedicated to war games. And then you get the counters. You get, uh, these are typically counters, like this is going to be the counters for Kursk, the game that comes in here. Um, and then I think it goes on over to here and then you get counters for other GMT games. So like this is Imperial Struggle. This is, um, let's see, Deluxe Dark, Dark Valley. This is No Retreat France and Poland, uh, Dark Sands. So, I mean, this is, um, sometimes these are like variant counters or sometimes there are, they could be misprints or some errata that's come up. I think they could be all kinds of different things that's come up in here. So uh, this is um, Firestorm Vietnam. So this is, these are the counters. Only get uh, looks like eight here for the uh, the dice game, the Vietnam dice game that comes in here. So most of these are dealing with Kursk, and then the dice game, and then the rest of these are for other uh, GMT uh, games. Here's some counters for for the people. And again, I don't know if they're errata or or just variant type uh, counters. I'd have to read up a little bit. Sometimes they usually have a little guide in here talking about what they are and, and uh, what they go for. Here is the new counters for the two new subtypes. So again, uh, you know, good stuff. Oh, here's Itsy or Issy. This is the uh, a game that was a free game that came in one of the C3Is. Uh, again, I keep on saying free. You had to pay for the magazine, so it's not necessarily free. But the game that came with a previous issue of C3I magazine... Uh, it might have actually came in the uh, Gettysburg issue, the one that came up with the Mark Herman Gettysburg game. But there was a battle uh, of Issy, which is a French battle at the very, very end, maybe one of the last battles of the Napoleonic uh, era or the Napoleonic regime. Um, so here's some counters for that. Again, don't know if those are uh, errata or if they're variant or what have you. I'd have to look into that a little bit. But this is typical what you get. You get a sheet of new counters for a game that comes with it or for other games, uh, usually in the GMT line. Uh, you don't get this in every issue, but this is some of the issues have this, have these little like graphic uh, posters that you can have for war games. You usually get some inserts um, for games. Here's for the Hunters. Here's a scenario for SPQR. A lot of back issues, you know, have SBQR, or Great Battles of History counters or, or scenario charts. And then you got, in this issue, you get, you know, two games, a dice game for Vietnam and a curse game with some uh, novel attributes or novel uh, um, mechanics uh, not typical to Hex and Counter games. And you get a magazine. And the magazine, again, is, I mean, the magazine itself is probably, you know, worth the price of admission. It's got a lot of good articles. So if you have those games or are interested in those games then this is really good stuff, but you get all this stuff on top of it. So that's what you get in the, in the C3i magazine number 34 uh, that just came out, uh, just released in the last oh two or three weeks. So 
Hopefully this was helpful. If you like, please like. If you want to see what else is coming up or know what's coming on, please subscribe. Uh, like to know your comments. What do you think about C3i Magazine? What do you think about other War Games Magazine? Do you, do you like this uh, focus on War Games themselves and the hobby and strategy and tactics with inserts for specific games? Or do you prefer, you know, the decision games route or the against the odds route or the other type of magazines that really kind of give you a game, but then the articles usually are either about the history behind the context of that game or other just context. You know, like the, the World at War series is going to cover for decision games covers World War II and Modern War covers, of course, Modern War and Strategy Tactics covers a range of of conflicts over time. And so... Uh, but it's usually historical based with, you know, the, the one issue you need to get with that with it or without a game. But the one that has the game, uh, of course, has a game and has those you know rules and counters. But, you know, they, they there's a, a bunch of historical articles that aren't necessarily just honed into the wargaming hobby, which is what C3i magazine does. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. And as always, thank you for watching.